There's been a gruesome murder, a baffling disappearance, and the theft of a priceless painting. And I'm going to figure out who's responsible. Or I'm going to try at least. Sir, there has been a murder, and you are a suspect. Recently, I picked up The Millhouse Murders by Yukito Ajitsuji, and I really want to solve this before I get to the end. Ever since a horrific car accident, Fujinumakichi has lived a reclusive existence in the remote mill house, his scarred face hidden behind a rubber mask. Then one stormy night, the tranquility of his retreat is shattered. The brilliant Shimada Kiyoshi arrives on the scene, but as he investigates the seemingly impossible events of that evening, death strikes again and again. Can Shimada get to the truth before the killer gets to him? And can you solve the mystery of the mill house murders before he does? I'm definitely going to try. I'm taking this pretty seriously. I have a whiteboard behind me so that I can take notes and share them with you. Pepe Sylvia, this name keeps coming up over and over again. And hopefully it will help you follow along. That way you can try and solve the murder as well. I'm going to go ahead and get started, but I just very quickly wanted to say that I do apologize in advance in case I butcher any of the characters' names. Okay, before we get started, I wanted to share a little bit more details about the plot and a little more info about the characters. Our main character, Kichi Fujinuma, is the owner of the mill house. He lives there with his wife, Yuri. Every year, Kichi invites a small number of guests to the mill house in order to view paintings that his late father, Issei, painted. These paintings are priceless and many people want to get their hands on them. Next, we have Masaki Shingo, who is a disciple of Issei and a close friend of Kichi's. He has been living at the mill house for a year. The reason that Kichi wears a mask is because he caused a car accident that resulted in his injuries along with Masaki's injuries and the death of Masaki's partner. Fumi is a live-in housekeeper. Kurumoto is the mill house's butler. Tomoko is a live-out housekeeper. Next we have Oishi who is a guest at the mill house. He is an art dealer. We then have Professor Mori, also a guest. Michimura, who is the director of a surgical hospital. Furukawa, who is a priest at the Fujinuma temple. And Shimada, who is introduced as an uninvited guest. Okay, I just read the prologue and I'm going to go over what I have so far with you. So on September 29th, 1985 at 5.50 a.m., these events have taken place and these four characters found a body in the incinerator and a severed finger, which they believe both the finger and the body could be Masaki. So I also have a character notes section. As you can see, I wrote that Kichi is a wheelchair user and that Mitomura is handsome. The reason that I wrote that down is because it said repeatedly the handsome Mitomura or the handsome guy. And I feel like that's important. I feel like sometimes authors use someone's physical appearance to try and sway your opinion like maybe we think Mitomura is a good guy because he's good looking but actually could be the killer i've got my eye on him got my eye on him okay outfit change because it's been a couple days i got busy trying to solve other murders <laughs> um but i've read to the halfway point of the book so far and i have a lot of information i have to update this board one thing I wanted to clear up really quickly is that I accidentally wrote women here, plural, when I meant to write woman, singular. Only one woman fell from a tower. <laughs> one of the first big pieces of information that I read is that the woman who fell from the tower is the live-in housekeeper, Fumi, who is now deceased. Deceased. The body that was found in the incinerator was confirmed to be Masaki, so obviously Masaki is deceased. We then learned a little bit more about Yuri, Kichi's wife, and something that I forgot to mention is the huge age difference between them. Yuri is 19 and Kichi is 46. We learned that Yuri became an orphan at a very young age and she was actually raised by Kichi at the age of nine. He took her in and raised her at the mill house and then they eventually got married, which is very odd and concerning. The book also describes Yuri as being imprisoned at the mill house. It doesn't seem like she really has a choice to leave. The relationship between her and Kichi is really odd. She doesn't really talk very much, and um, she doesn't seem to have any ill feelings towards him, but she's just kind of hard to read, I'd say. 
At this point in 1986, a year after the events, everyone believes that the person who stole the painting and killed Masaki and Fumi is Furukawa. He is missing, no one has seen him, so everyone just believes that he did it. So these events took place in 1985. I'm now going to write down things that happened in 1986 that I think are good notes or clues. One of the first big events that happens in 1986 is that Shimada finds a note that appears to be intended for Kaichi that says, leave, leave this house. We believe that it's intended for Kaichi because it was found in his sitting room. Um, Kaichi believes that the person who wrote the note tried to hide their handwriting by using a ruler, whatever that means. So that's a big thing that's happened. After the note is found, Kichi and Shimada have a conversation about it. And during that conversation, we find out that Kichi has a study that he does not use because he has lost the keys to it. And the way that he talked about it just seemed a little bit suspicious to me. It seemed like he just didn't want anyone kind of rooting around in there. So I don't know. I'm going to write that down because I think it's important. And the last important event that I want to talk about before I keep reading is that... Kichi actually heard Mitamura, the handsome Mitamura, flirting with his wife, Yuri. Now, Kichi could only hear what Mitamura was saying because he was speaking loudly. He could not hear what Yuri's responses are. However, we do know that Yuri has agreed to meet Mitamura at midnight. So we're going to find out. We're going to find out what's going on. I want to share two more important notes with you that happened in 1985. So during this time when Masaki and Fumi were murdered and the painting was stolen. We learned that before Fumi's death, someone used the lift to go from the ground floor to the tower. And the reason that this is unusual is because really no one except for Kaichi uses the lift because he's a wheelchair user, that's what it's intended for. So just based on that information, unless Kichi can walk without his wheelchair, which it doesn't seem like that is the case, he couldn't have done it because there would be no way for him to get down from the tower to the ground floor without using the lift. I also want to note that Furukawa, Kaichi, and Yuri were together at the moment when Yumi fell from the tower, so it was probably not them, and that obviously also removes Furukawa as the main suspect. Actually, before I keep reading, I have a couple more things to say. One of them being that Mori told Shimada that after Fumi had fallen from the tower, they had all gone outside into the rain. And when they came back inside, Mori noticed that the carpet in some areas of the house already appeared to be wet. And I just wanted to read that part just to clarify. I was in shock after what had happened, of course, but I still remember that I was leading the way as the four of us, Oishi, Mitamura, Furukawa, and myself, went back to the annex via the gallery. We were all soaking wet because of the rain, so there was, of course, nothing odd about the carpet being wet after we walked back inside. But I remember looking at parts of the carpet in front of me that were already wet, parts that we hadn't reached yet. Okay, I'm going to keep reading, and hopefully I will come back with an actual main suspect, something that I can tell you, something juicy. Um, this is juicy. I want to know what this is about, and I can't wait to find out. I don't have an idea of who the killer is yet. My guess, though, is that whoever pushed Fumi off of the tower balcony meant to actually push Yuri off the balcony and kill Yuri instead. Or maybe Fumi saw something that she shouldn't have, but my guess is that Yuri is in danger and that someone wants to kill her. I have about 50 pages left. I just reached an intermission, so I thought now would be a good time to update you. I have two very big things to share with you. So on September 29th, 1985, Kuramoto is getting ready for bed at about 11.10 p.m. And he sees a light outside that he believes is coming from a torch, like someone is walking with a torch along. And he tries to see who it could be. He tries to peer out the window, but the weather conditions are just not great. So he isn't able to identify someone. At 1.25 a.m., Yuri comes out of her bedroom because she hears a weird noise and she notices that the back door is open and that one of Issei's paintings is missing. At that time, Mitamura and Mori were playing a chess game and they did not see anyone come down the stairs. Now, based on where they're sitting, where the chess game is taking place, they would have had to see someone coming down the stairs, like it is right in their point of view, but neither of them say that they saw anyone coming down the stairs. They didn't see or hear the back door open. They didn't see anything suspicious. 
So Yuri sees that the back door is open. She sees that one of the paintings is missing. She goes to Kichi and she tells him what's going on. He wakes everybody up and they realize that Furukawa is missing. They go into his bedroom. His door was closed um, and there is no sign of him. He just vanished. They look everywhere. They look in the bathroom. There's nothing there. There are no signs to show that he opened any of the windows. Um, they were all bolted and even if he was able to unbolt them, the window doesn't fully open so he wouldn't have been able to escape. Um, Shimada tries to see if there's like a secret passageway or, or somehow that uh, Furukawa could have escaped but there is no sign of that. Eventually everyone decides to just go to bed because they can't go and try and find Furukawa because of the weather conditions so they decide to just wait it out until the next morning and let the police take care of it. As Yuri and Kichi are walking to their respective bedrooms, Masaki approaches Kichi and tells him to please not press charges against Furukawa and that he wants to be the one to talk to Furukawa and try to convince him to return the painting. As Yuri and Masaki are having this conversation, Yuri walks ahead and she screams and says that she can see someone outside from the window. So Masaki decides to run out because he believes it's Furukawa and he wants to talk to him, like I said. And he tells Kichi to leave the back door unlocked so that he can come in with Furukawa. At 3.40 a.m., Kuramoto is unable to sleep. He's really worried about Misaki because Kichi told him to make sure that the door was unlocked. So he is anxiously waiting for him to return. He decides to just take a peek out through the back door to see if Misaki is out there. And he sees wet footsteps. And the painting, the missing painting, he finds it at the top of the stairs. Unfortunately, Kuramoto cannot alert anyone about the fact that he has found the painting or the footsteps because he is knocked unconscious. At 5 a.m., Kichi wakes up and he is the one to find Kuramoto bound and gagged. Kuramoto isn't able to say who knocked him out, but we do know that he was gagged using an indigo handkerchief. Now we fast forward to September 29th, 1986 at 12.55 a.m. Kichi hears Yuri scream, so he immediately goes to her. So does Kuramoto, who lets Kichi know that unfortunately he has found Miss Nozawa dead. She was found in the hallway, strangled to death. Of course, everyone in the house is alerted to this, so they all run down and try and figure out what's going on. And at that point, Yuri lets them know that something happened in her room and... We know that Mitamura and Yuri were going to meet in her bedroom at midnight. So Shimada runs up the stairs to Yuri's bedroom and he finds Mitamura dead as well. Mitamura was found sitting at Yuri's piano. The back of his head was smashed in with a nail puller. Yuri lies and she tells everyone that she has no idea why Mitamura is in her bedroom. She said that she came out of her bathroom and she found Mitamura's body at the piano. Of course, we know that Kichi heard the conversation between Yuri and Mitamura, so he knows that Mitamura um, had Yuri's permission to be in her bedroom, and he doesn't say anything because he doesn't want to call attention to this in front of everyone. One thing I forgot to mention is before the two bodies were found, Kichi finds that his study was unlocked. He has no idea how or who unlocked it, but he also finds the key on the floor in front of the study. I don't have a main suspect in mind yet, but if I did have to point the finger, I think it's going to be Yuri. Just, it seems kind of obvious, and that's the only reason why I'm worried to say with certainty that it's Yuri, but there are just a couple things. Like, who else would have the key to the study if not Kuramoto or the housekeepers, which are deceased? Kuramoto, I just don't think he did it. I just don't really have a motive for it, whereas Yuri was imprisoned by Kaichi and she, you know, was raised by him and then had to marry him. I just, I feel like my girl did it. Obviously, the handsome Mitamura didn't do it, unfortunately. I was hoping that my initial suspicion would be right, but it's not. Before I move on, I do just want to share a timeline of events with you. This is on the night of September 29th, 1985. This is what Shimada has written down. 9 p.m. Furukawa goes down to look at paintings. 10 p.m. Kuramoto sees Furukawa in the Northern Gallery. At 10.30 p.m. Furukawa goes upstairs. 10.30 p.m. Oishi goes to his room. 10.50 p.m. Masaki goes to his room. Mitamura and Mori remain in the Annex Hall. 
At 1 a.m., Kuramoto sees suspicious light. Yuri hears suspicious sound, goes down, finds back door open, painting gone. At 1.50 a.m., Furukawa not found upstairs. I'm going to read the intermission, and if I find any interesting information, I'll come back. But I will definitely have my main suspect and final thoughts ready before the reveal is made. And I will also just go through a full time timeline of events before I reveal who the killer is. Okay, I'm almost to the end. I feel like it's going to be revealed soon, so I stopped reading. And I have to summarize everything for you and also tell you who I think did it. Let's recap the important things that happened September 29th, 1985. So Fumi fell or was pushed from the tower. Yuri, Kichi, and Furukawa were together when that happened. Yuri notices that the painting is missing at 1.25 a.m., and shortly after that, they notice that Furukawa is also missing. Misaka runs out into the night to find Furukawa. 3.40 a.m., Kuramoto is knocked unconscious, and at 5 a.m., Kichi finds him. Kichi wakes everybody up, and that's when they realize that the incinerator is on because they see the smoke from the window. So they all head down there, and that is where they find Masaki's body. The crimes that happened September 29th, 1986, is that Mitamura and Miss Nazawa were murdered. These murders happened when everyone was supposed to be in their own bedrooms. Yuri found Mitamura, and Kuramoto found Miss Nazawa in the hallway. Now I have to tell you who did it, or at least who I think did it. I've been thinking really hard about this. I've been trying to emulate, you know, Sherlock Holmes, Perry Mason, Nancy Drew, if you will, and... I think I know who did it. The main suspect to me is Kichi. What? But how could Kichi have killed these people? How could he have pushed Fumi off the tower if he was with Furukawa and Yuri? Why would he do that? It's his house. I'm going to tell you. I believe that the Mill House Murders has an unreliable narrator. This is one of my favorite tropes. I love it when I get to the end of a thriller, a horror, a mystery, whatever, and it's revealed that the narrator was shady all along. I think he's lying. I think he did it. I think that he has been trying to throw us off the whole time. I think that the events that we have here from his perspective are just incorrect. When it comes to Fumi, right, which is what threw me off the most and I just couldn't figure out, I'm going to go ahead and say that that was an accident. That's my assumption. That Fumi accidentally fell from the balcony. From Kichi's perspective, there is just nothing that gave me the idea that he wanted to do that or that he felt like he needed to. I am not under the impression that Fumi had any information that would lead to Kichi being arrested or anything. I'm going to say that she really did accidentally fall. Now it's time for the painting. I think that Kichi knows exactly where the painting is. I don't think it was stolen. I think that he was really tired of the tradition of inviting people to his house every year to view the paintings. And that is the reason why he created this drama. Now, why invite everybody back? If the murders and the painting being stolen in 1985 was enough reason to turn guests away forever. I don't have like a fully solid thought out answer to that one, but my guess is if it is Kichi, it's because again, he's behaving like an unreliable narrator. He is trying to convince himself that he didn't kill Masaki and maybe he just wants to pretend like everything is fine, invite everybody back. He wants to kind of absolve himself of that guilt, maybe ease any suspicions that anyone had because I find that Unreliable narrators are usually paranoid in ways that they shouldn't be. Like, nobody would suspect Kichi of doing this, but maybe he feels like they do. Now, the most important thing. How did Kichi murder all of those people, especially considering that he is a wheelchair user? This is going to sound bad, but I am going to go ahead and accuse him of lying. <laughs> I would never accuse anybody else of lying about this, but... For the sake of the story, I think that Kichi is lying to us about his ability to walk. Another possibility to me is that he could be using Yuri as his accomplice. I think that Yuri, just based on their relationship, would probably do whatever he asked of her. Let's establish a motive. I think that Kichi killed Mitamura and Masaki because he was jealous of them. 
He didn't like the way these men were interacting with Yuri. He didn't like the fact that Masaki was teaching Yuri how to play piano. He probably felt like he couldn't tell her not to take lessons with him because he clearly feels some guilt over imprisoning Yuri. Of course, Yuri agreeing to meet with Mitamura privately without telling Kichi about it, I think, is enough to make him so jealous that he decides to kill Mitamura. Now, why kill Nozawa? Now, this is a small detail that I really should have mentioned, but I didn't because it was so small, I didn't think it was relevant. Um, but Kichi didn't really like Nozawa, and I think that he missed having Fumi, and he probably felt, I don't know, guilty or upset about Fumi's death, and I think he just took it out on Miss Nozawa because he's insane. <laughs> I do realize that that is kind of weak. I mean, the fact that he killed her just kind of doesn't make sense, even if he did hate her or dislike her. Um, but that's what I got. Now on to Furukawa's disappearance. I think that if anybody knows a possibility to make someone vanish from their room, it's probably going to be Kichi. He is the master of the house. He knows the house better than anyone. And I just, I think he knows how it happened or he's responsible. I don't have an explanation for you. I really tried to think about how he could have escaped the room. I didn't really see any clues when they were looking through it and trying to find how he could have possibly escaped, but my guess is that Kichi knows exactly how it happened. I'm going to go ahead and finish this and I will come back and tell you whether I'm right or wrong. Okay, it's done. I finished it. The real killer has been revealed and I'm shocked actually. So I was right in a way, but I wasn't completely right. The killer was actually Masaki. Something that I learned about Masaki towards the end of the book is that he had been on the run from police due to a robbery and attempted murder. I was so close to the end that I didn't even think to like take this as a serious consideration. I just immediately was like, okay, whatever. I know that Kichi did it. Okay, so let's get through it. Masaki murdered Kichi because he was angry with Kichi for causing the accident that resulted in his partner's death and also in the injuries that Masaki sustained. The injuries which were revealed at the very end after we found out that Masaki was a killer was that due to a brain injury from the car accident, Masaki became colorblind and was no longer able to pursue painting. That threw me off a little bit. Like, I understand that he's colorblind, and in the book it specifically says that he was now unable to um, see various shades of red and green, but I feel like you can still paint, right? I don't know. I don't know. Since Masaki was on the run from the police, he decided that rather than just murder Kichi as revenge, he would take his place. After living with Kichi and Yuri for a year, he seduced Yuri and started a relationship with her. So Yuri was an accomplice. She also helped Masaki commit these murders. Okay, so going through the murders, Masaki killed Fumi because he was worried that she would be able to recognize that it was not actually Kichi. He didn't kill Kuramoto because he just didn't think Kuramoto would ever notice. Masaki killed Mitamura because of jealousy. He saw that Yuri and Mitamura were meeting in private and he actually heard Yuri being seduced by Mitamura and so he became so angry that he killed him. After murdering Mitamura, he ran out of the room and that is when Miss Nozawa saw him running and she was obviously confused because she knew Kichi to be a wheelchair user. So Masaki murdered her. So the painting was not stolen by Furukawa. Furukawa was actually murdered by Masaki and Yuri. Masaki entered Furukawa's room under the guise of just having a conversation with him. And that is when Masaki strangled Furukawa. And then he and Yuri dismembered the body and he put the body in plastic bags, threw them out of the window, and then took them to the incinerator. He put Furukawa's body into the incinerator and he chopped his own finger off, which at the beginning we talked about how these characters found a finger. It was actually Masaki's. He cut his own finger off that way when an autopsy would be done, they would be able to determine that the fingerprints matched with uh, Masaki. So there actually was a secret passage in the house, it just wasn't in Furukawa's bedroom. So when Masaki tried to kill Kichi to take his place, 
Kichi was able to get away and get into a secret lift that took him down to the basement. And because Masaki didn't see this, he didn't see how Kichi was able to do this, he felt like it was actually Kichi who had disappeared, not Furukawa. Shimada actually found the secret passage. He went into the fireplace and there was a button that would take the lift down to the basement. The leave this house note was written by Yuri. She wanted Masaki to find it and be frightened by it because she wanted to leave him. She no longer wanted to be with him and live at the mill house. So she was trying to get him to leave, I guess. So there you have it. It was Masaki all along. I'm not gonna count this as a win, even though I did guess the unreliable narrator aspect to it. Hopefully next time I'll have better luck. And he would have gotten away with it too if it wasn't for meddling Shimada. Filming this was so much fun and I loved the book as well. I really enjoyed reading it and I definitely wanna pick up the other book by this author. I hope that this was enjoyable for you and if you did enjoy it, it would be really great if you could consider leaving a like or subscribing to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye.